I had somebody reach out to me about making some U-bolts that they couldn't find for a specific application. Uh, they're 3 16 diameter, 7 8 inside diameter for clamping, 1032 thread, which is na native to a 3 16 diameter, and cross-drilled for a uh, cotter pin or split pin at the end. They had drawings, they gave them to me. I said I'd take a shot at it. These came out pretty well, and I figured I'd talk a little bit about the process I used to make them and the fixture I made to bend these. I only had to make a small quantity, I only had to make four. If I had to make 10, 20, or 100 of them, I would have refined this fixture, but uh, I got through four of them just fine. This started out as 3 16 rod or wire supplied by the customer. This is a uh, 4130 steel. Uh, first cut to length, ground the ends to add a little bit of a chamfer so that the threading would go well. Then I power thread them on the lathe with a high quality threading die. So this was adjustable. That way I could make sure I had a decent thread fit for the nuts that the customer was going to be using on it. And the cross drilling for the cotter pin was straightforward enough at the drill press. For forming this, I needed one of these kind of bending setups where it will, a roller followed the part along a die. So the inner wheel in, in line here is 7 8 diameter, which is the desired ID of the finished part. This follower wheel happens to be 7 8 also because I had turned some stock to 7 8 and used it for both things. I threaded this one for a quarter 20 inside. That way I can have a threaded stud in here that floats in the handle, the bender handle here. So when this is all the way down, the back of the handle is relieved so that this comes far enough down that we can see th between the two rollers. And down in the back, to hold the stud in the right place, you know, so it's, it's all cut to length and threaded and everything first, this is the final operation. There's a square nut in here, which sits in a, I forget what it is, like a 9 16 hole. So this square nut sits there to hold the end of the th threaded rod or the stud exactly where it needs to be so that when forming, the stud can't pull this way. That way I can set the thread depth once I figure out for the leg lengths that were desired on this part. I could set the part into that nut, figure out through a trial and error a little bit exactly where it should be placed, form it. If I need to do any fine adjustments to the final shape. I could do that at the arbor press easily enough just to get them perfectly to the customer's tolerance. And then the, the very last thing was just uh, running uh, drill bit through the holes by hand to clean things up and then annealing this part so it doesn't have any stress in it uh, for their application. So the geometry of the jig end is looking like this from the side where the handle, which is the square profile here, protrudes out somewhat from some relief that allows this roller to get all the way up against. This is the side of the, the inner portion of the fixture. This is the, the ears that I welded on the outside. So this can, should be able to swing all the way up against here. The nut that holds the stud is somewhere down here. And then looking at it from this side, we end up with something like this. I didn't quite draw this right, but these are the ears I welded on. There's a pin, or I think it makes it a 3 8 inch bolt through here that holds the die. So this is the 7 8 inch cylinder. And then really I should have drawn it further down here because this is the 1032 threaded nut that we're threading into. This is the roller in the handle. The diameter of this doesn't matter, but what does matter is that when the handle is all the way down, it should be touching the bottom. So this is the 3 16 rod threaded in. The roller and the handle should be touching the bottom, and then the die should just be at the top of this. That way is the handle, which is here, flips up. It forms this around this using this roller. So in the handle, you end up with this hole that the pin goes through. You know, the handle rotates about the same axis as the die through that bolt or uh, with that bolt or pin through it. Then you have another hole out here where this roller is. So if the die is in here and the roller is here, whatever diameter this is, this matter, this diameter is the size that you want the U-bolt to be. The space between these surfaces 
is the diameter of the rod that you're forming. So that's the geometry that's critical, is you want to place the roller in the handle the, this distance away so that they're both making or almost making contact with the rod. So that as this moves around here, it forms this tightly around the die. So here's how the forming process goes. I take the threaded stud, fit it in from the back, thread it into the square nut that sits in this pocket in the middle of the fixture. And then for this length, I end up threading it all the way in. And then form it over the top. Go until the ends are parallel. And then swing this over. Take the nut off. And then do the next one. There we go. There we go. So that's the process I use. Uh, I used two lengths of material for initial forming testing. I had a different jig I tried to use at first that did not work properly at all. I was trying to just use a um, tool I made for the arbor press to press down into a a V, basically a V block that had a, a U shape in the bottom, and I could not get consistent leg lengths on that. So I ended up heating these and straightening them out and using them as a first test on this fixture. Then I made three more to fine tune the um, exact placement of the bend for the leg lengths. The customer wants a couple that are not necessarily to the finished spec for their own fabrication and testing purposes, so I'm going to give them uh, all these as well, but that's why I didn't try and heat and retest with these because I knew they wanted some spares. And then the final four at the top, which are within all their specs and tolerances. Hope uh, this gives some, somebody some ideas. My bending jig here was inspired by uh, just the way that some of the multi-purpose configurable benders, like the Hossfeld ones, work. Uh, obviously, this old Tony has a great video on those. And then there's somebody else on YouTube that I'll link in the description that had a video for U-bolts they make for all thread, out of all thread. I think it was maybe three-eighths and half an inch and a couple of different diameter, inside diameters. That gave me an idea about the general layout of this. Uh, it would be cool to have a general purpose configurable version of this, but that gets a little weird with if you want to be able to do different diameters within, let's say, one sixteenth steps, that's too close together to have the holes in this section for the inside diameters to place the dies at the right place. Uh, so you would end up needing some shims on top of here and it would get a little strange, but uh, maybe somebody is able, does make or would make those. So I hope this helps someone and uh, you'll see me next time.